Hello, dear friends. May God bless you all and bless you by opening your understanding and removing the God of this age that blocks and blinds people's minds. May the Holy Spirit come right now in this very moment to remove the blindness that by any chance might be in your understanding so that you can comprehend, understand, and know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, so that you may know Jesus as he is, because one thing is to have information about Jesus, information of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. And another thing, completely different, is for you to know him in person and to have an experience with him. And whenever this happens, you are going to be the happiest person on earth, the richest person on earth. There might be people as rich as you, but richer than you, not at all. Because in this consists the glory of the human beings, to know and understand comprehend the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the glory of God's children. Only the children of God have such privilege. But those who are not children, they can become. As long as they hear His Word and put it into practice, then yes, it will happen that they will have the same joy. Anyway, let us continue our meditation about the story of the rich man and Lazarus. I repeat, it was a story, not a parable that Jesus spoke about. He didn't say a parable. From the moment that he makes an analogy and mentions the name the name of a person that he honored, then it's no longer a parable and it's a fact, it's a reality. It happened. And what happened with Lazarus and the rich man was in the times when Israel was there in Babylon, when Judah was taken captive, Jerusalem more specifically, was taken to Babylon as captives. So under the emperor of Nebuchadnezzar, so eventually there are more emperors as well who also had to obey the voice of God. However, this happened. This happened. And we've already spoke about the beginning of this when Jesus said when they died, so the rich man died, Actually, he first said that Lazarus died and he was carried right after he died. Actually, he fell asleep. So right after he fell asleep, he was carried to Abraham's bosom, meaning his soul that had detached from his body was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom which is the place that Abraham is. Once his faith was in the God of Abraham, then he was carried to where Abraham was and he still is. Nice, isn't it? But the rich man, when he died, he was buried. That's it. Jesus concluded there. And then he spoke of the destination, the final destination, of the soul of the rich man. He was buried. Only that. And then Jesus says afterwards that lifting up his eyes in torments, there in Hades, he lifted up his eyes, crying for help, groaning, begging for help. He said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water 
and cool my tongue. This means that the rich man whose name was not mentioned is not mentioned here because he didn't honor God, so God didn't even honor him by mentioning his name. Then he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me because he saw Abraham and Lazarus in his bosom. He saw them. He saw. So he had eyes to see. I believe that the body, the body that the person receives here in the world is to be subject to the physical, material things of this world. So our body needs water, food, oxygen to be taken care of and so on and so forth. Well, when this body is left here, is buried here on earth, then the soul, our soul, is then given a new body. Because here, the rich man saw, he saw Abraham, meaning he had eyes. He had eyes to see. And more, not just that, he had a conscience. Above all, he was aware of where he was. He had eyes to see. He had a conscience. He knew that he was suffering, that he was in hell. He had this conscience that he was in a place of eternal torment, that there is no way to change the situation anymore because when the person goes to hell, there is no way to change that situation anymore. There is no way. Not even God can change because God is the one who established that. If here in the world a person despised the voice of God, the word of God, God's invitation, for them to return to Him, then in eternity they are then left with whoever they served here in the world. And that's how it happens. However, it's very clear here, very clear that the person, the soul of the person that goes to hell has also a body, just as the person who is resurrected and receives a resurrected and glorified body as the Lord Jesus did. And those who serve Him, when they fall asleep, then they also receive a body, a new body. A body not as this one here of flesh and bones and blood. No, but a glorified body. But this we are going to see once we enter heaven. If you enter there, you see. If you don't go there, you are going to have another body, a body that will stand, that will bear, that will tolerate every pain and torment of hell, which is the case here. Because the rich man said, Father Abraham, he saw Abraham and Lazarus in his bosom, so he asked, Have mercy on me. So he called Abraham Father. And he could call as much as he want. But the situation was not going to change, which is the case of many people who say, Our Father in heaven, as if God was their Father, but He's not. Children are only those who are born of the Father, born of the water and of the Holy Spirit. Whoever is not born of the water and of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, they cannot enter the kingdom of God. So, Abraham obviously had his experience with God, and we saw this in his story, and he went to the place where God was, God is. But it's interesting that the rich man saw Abraham. He didn't see a soul. He saw a body. He saw a body. He saw a person there. So much so that when he said, when he cried out, saying, Father Abraham, he knew that Abraham could hear him. 
So he was talking to someone that he was, let's say, communicating with. And how would they communicate? Through his word. He saw and he spoke with Abraham. He spoke. That means he had a body. It's my understanding here. So he said, Father Abraham. He called Abraham as a father, but he didn't resolve anything else anymore because he was already in hell. There is no father, mother. There is no one that can save someone like that. So we are going to see the conclusion of this story here that this truly happened. Have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger. So Abraham had a finger, he had a hand and fingers. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Look at that. He had a tongue as well. Of course, if he spoke, he had a tongue. But a physical tongue and a spiritual tongue at the same time. Why? Because his tongue was indeed dry and thirsty. It was something out of this world. Sometimes when we preach, we speak and we preach the word of God, Sometimes I, my mouth gets so dry, but so dry, that if I don't drink water, I can't even speak properly. And that's why I always have to be drinking water, because the mouth gets dry and it's unbearable. I feel this discomfort, so I have to drink water. Excuse me, speaking of which. How nice, isn't it? It's so good, the dry mouth and tongue, and then you drink fresh water. How nice, it's wonderful. It's only God indeed. So, the rich man had his mouth dry. His tongue was dry, dry, dry. Dried like the tongue of a parrot. So, he said, send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For, pay attention, we saw that he saw Abraham from afar, he spoke to Abraham, he had the understanding, awareness of where he was, he asked Abraham to send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool his tongue. So he saw Abraham, he saw Lazarus, he saw everything that was happening on the other side. Obviously, God allowed that in order for this story to be registered. And Jesus could tell this story many years later. Hundreds of years later, Jesus came and spoke this story. And only Jesus could tell this story because he saw it. He saw, he was already before all things, he already existed. So he saw, he witnessed this. So he himself said this story. He tells this story, this fact, this reality. So it shows that the rich man had conscience, he had eyes, he had ears to hear Abraham, he had a tongue that was dry, he felt pain and torment, torments, he said there to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame, meaning that his torment wouldn't end, the pain he was feeling would never cease ever. I wish I was a poet so I could explain this in beautiful, wonderful words. But I'm a preacher and ignorant. I speak as it comes to my head, the way that God places in my mouth. But I see here that he says, I am tormented in this flame. And I think that such torment only those who have or had depression knows what it's like because a person that suffers with depression for them the world has no color no life it doesn't matter how much money they have because they have no peace within them there is a continuous torment 
And that's why many people end up killing themselves because they think that by dying, this torment inside of their body, in their soul, will end. They will sleep and they will spend eternity asleep. But it's a lie. It's a, a lie of the devil. The person will never rest. Never, ever, in no time. Once dead, dear friend, it doesn't end there. It starts that a new life starts, either with God or there in hell alongside the devil and all his demons. So he says like this, he said, for I am tormented in this flame, which means even though his soul was in hell, his soul was tormented day and night. Whoever goes to hell has their soul tormented 24 hours a day, not even a second of rest. Jesus shows that when a person dies, then their destination is eternally sealed, defined. There is no way to change that situation. And this is my, my, let's say, this is what bothers me, because I know that God wants to save everyone, but not everyone believes. Not everyone believes in, in, in wants what he has. Everybody wants to live according to the will of the world. And therefore, what can we do? We feel the pain of people. It's like the Apostle Paul said once, I feel the pain of labor until people are born again to be born of the water and of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I feel as well. Pain of labor, because we speak, we teach, we preach, we give direction, we give what we have received from God. But still, many people, the vast majority, does not pay attention and they follow their life. However, after they die, there is no way anymore, there is no solution, there is no prayer, there is no such thing as pray for me, you can never think like, oh, I'm going to go to the purgatory. No, there is no such thing as purgatory. There is no second chance. There is no point for prayers. You can give all the money, everything you have in order to try and help the soul of your loved one that has died. But nothing is going to help. Zero. Prayer, fasting, videos, nothing will change the situation of a soul that departs from this world. If they are with God, they are in the glory with Him. But if they are in hell, they will be tormented for the rest of eternity. Have you imagined there is no end and they are in hell, no one will be able to kill themselves. The person has already ended their final destination. They've reached the final destination of their soul. There is no more death. They are already living in torment. Meaning, if there was death after they died, then if there was a chance for them to change that situation, then Jesus wouldn't be speaking here about the story. He wouldn't focus on the life of the rich man there in heaven. For I am tormented in this flame. Help me, Abraham. Help me, Father Abraham. So now he recognized Abraham as father, but there's no way anymore. It's pointless for the person to try to recognize God after they are in hell. There is no solution. God won't hear. That's what Jesus shows here. Abraham said to him like this, look how nice. Abraham said, Son, since he called Abraham as father, then Abraham also replied, Son. But he didn't say that if he was his son, because he wasn't. Son, son of whom? Of the devil, of hell. He said, Son, remember 
that in your lifetime you received your good things. Remember. And then comes that question. What did you do with your goods while you were in life? What have you been doing with the goods God is giving you? What are we doing with the goods that God is giving to us? God will ask us account for these things. Do you know this? He will ask us to give account of what we received in life. Everything. He won't leave everything blank. We are going to speak more about this tomorrow. He said, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and likewise Lazarus evil things but now he is comforted and you are tormented. Tormented. That's the word. Tormented. Tomorrow we are going to continue with this and speak more about this subject. Okay? May God bless you all. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will open your understanding once again in order for you to be aware that your body, our body, has an expiry date here in this world, but not our soul. It will live for all eternity. The soul doesn't die. Don't forget that. Souls don't die. You can kill the body, but not the soul. It's impossible to kill it. It's impossible. It's impossible to kill it. It will live throughout eternity. With God or with the devil, it will live for all eternity, for sure. May God bless you all. And today, as it's been happening on Wednesdays, we are going to have one more revelation of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven at all the universal churches of the kingdom of God. If you want to learn more about the revelations of the kingdom of heaven, which is only given to those who are chosen, not to everyone. Those who believe will receive it, and those who don't will be sucking their thumb. If you want to receive it today, then go to a universal church of the kingdom of God, okay? God bless you, and until then, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God.